So you want to know the secret. I told you before that if I knew, I would tell you. As it so happens, I do know, so you're in luck. The secret is there is no secret. When you make a commitment, nobody's going to do it but you. So here's a mop. You wanted this, now prove it to me. Let's begin. I'm gonna tell you something, I've been so down on myself, I've been so goddamn mad that I've been unable to find the energy within to do this, and I am no longer willing to take it. It's June 10th, 2020, and this is SCP Cafe, but that's not important right now. Here's the situation. I made a commitment to myself to record a certain number of episodes in the month of June, and that number was 30. That's not necessarily to say one every day, but that is 30 episodes in 30 days. Now, I have been feeling under the weather. I think I've got a cold or something along those lines. You might have picked it up a little bit towards the tail end of yesterday's show. That is unacceptable. I will not stand for it. And the fact of the matter is, when you make a commitment, you really do need to honor those promises to yourself. Um, I feel like people devalue themselves by letting things go um, when, when they set out on a journey, when they set out on a New Year's resolution, when they set out on a monthly goal, when they set out on a habit they wanted to start, they had all of this positive energy. They could visualize the result, and it was eating them alive to not be there right now. And if I knew a way to harness that energy whenever I needed it, God damn it, there's nothing I couldn't do. Let me tell you a little something about a little phrase I heard uh, out here in New Mexico. It's no ganas. It's, I got no ganas. I got, I got no go. I got no energy today. I don't know what it is. I got no ganas. Shit ain't gonna fly today, boy. And as I find myself on the bully pulpit right now, I, you know, I feel like the dude from the fucking power thirst commercials. Um, but what the hell? I'm already here. Um, let's, let's continue with that train of thought. I know a lot of you are writers that have things they really want to talk about. I know they've got things they really want to share with the world. And it's so easy to let the real world get in your way, to let life and all of the little mundane, trivial things just chip away at your energy. So when the time comes that you've got the free time, you find yourself without the motivation to do anything. In my case, a lot of the time, that is depression. That's clinical depression. And depression is a thief and a goddamn liar because it will tell you that you can't do it. And I am here right now to tell you that, yes, you absolutely can, and you should, so you can shut that voice up. So let's begin. We only had four uh, surviving articles. Uh, I say surviving. There is a tale not too much longer for this world, sitting at minus six, and uh, four SCPs um, ranging anywhere from the mid-teens to the 70s. So here's the thing. Between being feeling a little under the weather, not um, having things work out the way that my plan I alluded to yesterday, um, that really didn't work out today. Maybe it'll work out better tomorrow. Maybe it won't. Does it matter? Hell no. There's enough time in the day to make this stuff happen if you really want it to. And it's mind blowing that I can sit there in bed and know damn well how much time was spent doing nothing and wondering where the day went. It's unacceptable. 
So let us collectively find our ganas and proceed with SCP-5662. This one is called Act 3, Life and Death by Popsy Oak. And for me, this piece had a couple of things working against it. Um, one of them is towards the top. Uh, a couple of little things. These are minor deviations from the format that we're used to seeing. Um, not having, like having our item number not actually say SCP-5662, simply 5662. That doesn't bother me quite as much as the next line, the object class and clearance, all being on the same line. So we have the word Euclid and a slash, and the word to, T-W-O, spelled out bold and in blue. And this isn't for any particular point to be made in the work. Um, it is simply sort of an intentional deviation from the expected standard um, don't be surprised if people don't get any farther than this to downvote your work um, it is very common and it's one of those like these deviations are small but significant people are going to look at it and they're going to go why what did this buy you why was it worth doing um, to you know change our expected behavior in this way what did we get for that change the answer here is not much um the other thing i really had an issue with is sort of the the setup of it is a little how do i want to say this um we have a dash one that is basically it will appear simply for the purposes of exposition um i don't have um it, it doesn't show anything else happening but the sake of pure storytelling they're literally the only times we run across this thing is to move the story along um sometimes that is more subtle than others in this case i don't think it worked very well um I, you know, feel fairly beaten over the head with what we're trying to to do here. And to kind of make matters worse, the jumping in between of the point of view of this junior researcher and the dash one, our POI here, um, didn't really work for me. Um, we've just got a few too many factors here that are against sort of what I'd like to see in a work at this point. And this is an exceptionally difficult line to walk. I fully understand that. Um, striking the balance of horror to storytelling is difficult. Um, but our premise here at its base is not compelling enough to hide the other sort of flaws in the piece. This is a minus one from me. Moving on now, SCP-5280, titled Honey Mandius. Uh, this is a co-write between Amelia Wright and Stormbreath, our uh, promotion candidate to the position of moderator. I'll talk about promos uh, after we talk skips for a little while. Um, I liked this piece. This um, working in... Uh, sort of an interesting niche of like sort of the uh, the supporting mechanics of the uh, the Deavite, uh civilization, its culture, um, the little things that would go into um, the logistics of keeping them alive. If you've got anomalous plants, you might need some anomalous bees to make them work. It's a simple premise that is executed on very well. Um, the testing log is really good. The uh, the excerpts um, are really um, really interesting. They they make you think. Um, and this is like I tend to be um, a little. I don't know. I don't think I'm generally as big a fan of the whole Deavite thing as much as some others. Um, so this piece also has um, a relatively short length uh, working 
uh, to its uh, advantage. One other thing that I liked about it was that we have uh, some crosslinks all the way back to series one. Um, you don't see a lot of that these days in a well-written piece. It's interesting to me because, I mean, let's be honest, there are a thousand of those boys in series one, and there's still, I think, room to tie into some of those and make for a piece that is more interesting for its inclusion. Um, this does it in uh, a couple of times, and we also have a series four, we've got a series five, we've got crosslinks in, in a few different places here, and it works really well. Um, this was a really well done Corpse Con piece and got a very easy plus one from me. Moving on now, SCP-5907, titled The Perfect Fit, written by Dr. Akimoto, which features a 19th century oil lamp that, when lit, causes it to emit trace amounts of fluctuating Akiva radiation. Do I have your attention, Mr. Spike Brennan? I appreciated our conversation last night. Uh, always enjoy hearing from you. Now, if I had to point at one thing that I love about this piece, it is this piece understands the value and, to be to be honest, the difference between good and great in an article that the right picture can make. The picture and its caption are perfect. You can't do better than this. It is just the thing after the log um, to, <laughs> to... It seals the mental image. Like, if there was any doubt on what happened, the picture absolutely drives it home. Um, really, really well done. Um, if I had to make one adjustment, what I might do is go straight... <sighs> You know, I don't know. I was going to say I would go straight from the video log into the second collapsible, this incident report. What I might do to preserve the shock of seeing the image would be, I think I would do that. I think I would move the video log down to the bottom of this discovery section and then put the incident report behind a collapsible um, to offer that real, that real visceral punch of, yep, here they are. <laughs> I'm being intentionally vague because this is absolutely worth a read. It's not very long. It's a great piece. Plus one. Moving on now, SCP-5430 titled Snake Wearing 48 Sneakers by Community Outreach Captain and Wiki Moderator, A Random Day. This piece is en fuego. It is at plus 80 in less than 24 hours. And it doesn't take much to see why. This piece is shorter than my hand. I can take my hand and, and go all the way from item number to the bottom of the final addendum. And despite that, it tells a very fun, not very serious story very well. It injects a ton of character in a very short amount of time. And that is a real talent that's really, really difficult to do. Um, we can always, you know, uh, talk the talk about show, don't tell. This is how you do that. And look, this thing is super endearing. Like, I really got a smile on my face after eating this thing. It's just awesome. It's, it's adorable. Um, and... This is, you know, by general acclamation, being really well received. It feels like a Series 1 skip in a good way, that we have, you know, short length, it's funny, it's, you know, w when we talk about, we, we, we consider this boundary of humor versus horror on the main list, um... This is fine. You know, th this is the one thing I hope that people are finally coming around on is you don't have to put something that is funny in the joke category if you don't want to. This is doing quite well on the main list. 
I've said it before, not every article has to put a man on the moon. Not every article has to cure cancer. Some can just tell a fun story about a snake with 48 pairs of shoes. And this is one of those. Outstanding work art, plus one. Now, long-time listeners might say, hey, you didn't say last but not least. That was your last skip. You didn't say last but not least. Oh, and on the topic of long-time listeners versus new listeners, uh, I want to very quickly say hello to my buddy Mark Basler, who is sketching this show for the first time. Um, he is a co-worker of mine, and uh, as sometimes happens, questions, you know, get asked. I do a lot of Zoom calls. All of my, uh, you know, recording stuff is, cl- is you know, visible. And we get to talk, and he's given this a listen. Um, always appreciate you, bud. You do a great job keeping the place in good spirits, and we are very lucky to have you. Anyway, um, we have my real last but not least here is SCP Wiki staff who are being promoted. We have June promotions. Um, this is kind of crazy because it feels like the promotion schedule has been so strange as of, you know, I say as of, it's always been strange. Um, it had been something we were supposed to do like once a quarter and eventually it turned into like, we'll do one about every nine months, nine or 10, if we want to, I guess. Um, but we're kind of, uh, we're getting closer to a quarterly thing. So, um, that's good because it's not quite as much work for the team to get interviews done and to, um, you know, get everybody together. It's a lot of work to, you know, review all these bodies of work from the candidates and having a smaller group, um, really does make life easier in that regard. So our candidates from junior staff to operational staff, deadly bread, jackal related and malice graves. Um, I did abstain on the first two, um, not because I don't think they're capable of being OS. Um, it is simply because my work and theirs have not overlapped, uh, enough for me to have, uh, a sufficient opinion. And given that right now they are passing by unanimous or very nearly unanimous assent, um, I didn't feel obligated to give, you know, uh, to give a no or give a yes or give anything. Um, you guys have earned your promotions and me abstaining is the truth of the matter. I don't have, um, enough exposure to say in my heart of hearts. Yeah, I think they're ready. I don't know. I know you guys are both great and I'm happy to see you, uh, keep moving along the ladder as it were. Um, one I chose not to abstain on is Malice Graves, who I mentioned in my promotion comments that they have, if they so choose, the ability to go as far as they want on this wiki. And I truly believe that. Um, I very rarely have had as good a feeling about a user from a very early point as I have with Malice, and they are uh, an absolute pleasure to work with in the chat and seeing them work um, in their capacity as JS. Um, I am fully confident in their ability. So this is well earned. Um, I don't believe there are any abstentions. I believe Malice is a unanimous vote thus far. Um, in the candidates to be promoted from operational staff to moderator, there are four and three of them come from my team. AIS Mallard, Dr. Bleep, and Stormbreath are all, uh, you know, forwarded for promotion by tech. Um, G0765 is the fourth. Um, I gave my comments on each of these candidates, which... Uh, I voted yes down the line on um, AIS Mallard has truly been uh, a blessing. Um, he's been uh, a wonderful friend. He's been uh, 
a source of professional uh, support and understanding and a very thorough knowledge of all of the stuff that we need to get the wiki's technical side to the next level. Um, some of you guys will never see uh, the technical work that goes into the presentation of the wiki. And if we end up having Project Foundation be successful, um, you may never see the work that he does because it's not always the most visible. But if we get there, I can tell you it absolutely would not happen without him. Um, he's also been a very uh, willing and capable um, volunteer in keeping our uh, our organizational system. We're kind of setting up some new stuff. We've got access to some new toys. We have a Jira. We've got a Confluence. And his experience with those tools has been great because it takes that off of my shoulders. He's helping get other tech staff on board with using it. And um, he knows this stuff better than I do in a lot of respects because he's a, a professional developer and I'm just an idiot. You know, I build Windows servers and, and mailboxes and shit. Um, so to have that source of true professional development experience is something that we've been short on. Magnus absolutely has that in spades, um, but we need more. That has to keep growing, you know, on down the line uh, for us to get where we want to be. And we are a lot closer to that target with having Mallard. Um, Bleep and Stormbreath. Uh, Bleep does um, a ton of work on the uh, the new MAST team, maintenance and ancillary staff. As a matter of fact, Bleep is a captain while being at the operational staff level. Um that is fairly unprecedented, and it is uh, absolutely to her credit that uh, when, and I may not be remembering this quite right, but I seem to remember that this was offered before this promotion to moderator, and it was declined out of interests of uh, not having the time to devote to that additional level of responsibility because moderator for me really is where the rubber meets the road. It's not only do you have the ability to work in your lane and do the stuff that your team needs, but when you are put in that position of moderator, you've also got a broad understanding of the, of the wiki and all of its teams and understand the various goals of them and when they intersect and where you can contribute even for things outside of your team and bleeps have be, bleeps been outstanding in that regard um she has helped me with some stuff for um an off-site project that we're not really ready to disclose yet i think we still have to get some finishing touches on it um before we can turn it around and i can you know uh brag about it but um I think the promotion to like, you know, making mast a full on team and being a captain, this was a long time coming and very well earned. And storm breath has been great to work with. Um, he's been consistently helpful, um, working on a ton of some fairly not fun work, um, with regards to organizing things for tagging, building new components, um, making use of all of the crayons in the wiki.box, box, um, coming up with some really elegant solutions to problems that don't involve any new code. They don't involve any new scripts being built. This is all stuff we can do in wiki dot. People don't have to adjust a damn thing and it just works. And it's awesome to see that stuff. A promotion to moderator usually means that we trust your judgment like a lot. We want to hear what you have to say. And this is what I want to say to Stormbreath is make this uh, an opportunity to be heard. I want to know what you think about a lot of things. Magnus does too. We fully, you know, believe in your expertise to build the the blocks of the wiki at a level beyond what either of us are honestly capable of. Um, 
where my expertise is and where Magnus's expertise is um, are in things outside really the true scope of like the wiki dot formatting and markup. I might end up there by the time we finish this wiki dork project, but that's a ways away. And um, I still don't know if I'll ever get there because once certain things are working, I'm not going to touch them again. Um, you've had no hesitation in picking up things and just making shit work, getting shit done. It's very much appreciated. But the next step here is let us know your thoughts on more stuff. Get, you know, jump in and make yourself heard. We believe in you and we want to know what you have to say. The last one here, the one outside of tech purview, is G0765, who's been a really diligent worker. Um, it's always, um, we, we don't see a lot of these where they just keep their head down, do the work, continu consistently, continuously make the wiki a better place and ask for nothing in return. This is, you know a very generous, giving, selfless sort of person. And it is reflected in their body of work and their uh, their demeanor and ability to be at that same level of helpfulness um, on uh, chat staff, um, which is a, a thing also shared by AIS Mallard. Um, G's work touches a lot of different moving parts of the wiki, and those users are really worth promoting because they see things at a broad level. Um, and especially like being in both the staff chat and the chat staff chat, the op chat, um, you know, he gets exposed to a lot of things and is never lost, never, you know, outwardly concerned about any of it, just pitches in and keeps going and talks through ideas. And there's, I don't have a lot else to say. Um, these have been uh, four really, really good users. I am very happy to see all of them. Um, on the route to promotion to moderator with, again, near unanimous approval. And I suppose there was one other promotion, but he's not all that important <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Um, we had 80 applications yesterday, and fully 39 of them did not uh, meet the guidelines to give you an idea of what that process um, looks like. It's not hard, and I know any of you that are members are like, what the hell? How could that be? I don't know, <laughs> but it is. But it's true, um, and about half and half seems to be the norm. Some of these applications are really not good. Some of them are fine. It's it's weird, but it is what it is. Um, people have to do this little this little bit. We're not asking for a lot, are we? Like. You do your one little thing of required reading, literally the only thing keeping you out of the site. You do this for us, you're good forever. You're not paying any dues. There's no, like, pop quiz, stop and frisk shit. There's none of that. Do this for us, you know? I don't know. We made it. We're at about 29 minutes, and I have found... My energy again, thanks to this wonderful group of wiki staff that have earned their promotions, and a snake wearing 48 Tims. So, thank you for playing along, as always. Um, wanted to also give a thank you to William, who just placed a uh, an order on the SCP Cafe store. Um, he's going to be getting a uh, decal uh, foundation pin an O5 access card and a shirt and very happy to send all of that his way. Um, if you thought this show or the work being done to back up the wiki is worth a dollar, 
patreon.com slash scp cafe is as always the place where you can go and help us out so until next time keep reading keep writing and goodbye fellow kids <laughs>